Welcome to the series of, how did they make this render? Today, we are going to analyze this project made by Lucid Dreams, an architectural visualization studio located in Italy. To create these images, they mainly used Cinema, Corona Render, Speed Tree, Forrester, and Photoshop. In that project, they wanted to represent the Hanzhou Normal University, a century-old university located in China. What they liked most about that project was the size of the whole complex and the rainy atmosphere. It's a potentially simple-shaped building, but made very interesting by the random overhanging floors, which create a nice contrast between solids and voids. They were inspired by those photos we are looking at, taken by photographers Rui Jing and Hui Zhang, and also found some blueprints that helped a lot in capturing the correct proportions of the buildings for modeling. The building was not very difficult to model. It is fairly square, alternating large thick floors with modular windows. The first model is always a bit clunky, but helps you focus on the solid to void ratios and shows you if you are moving in the right direction. The first materials are also very quick, a pure white and a simple reflective glass. Once they had checked the first step, they moved on to creating the modular windows with MooGraph tools, which allows you to edit many clones with one click. They needed some background buildings. To do this, they chose a uniform texture from textures.com, which they then applied to a simple cube. Next, they started cutting and extruding following the windows and other elements of the texture. They put in some additional details, such as air conditioners and satellite dishes, always keeping the shape very simple. Bravo. The bare trees scene was the most difficult. They wanted to give it a real look of a work site, spreading a lot of sand, debris and old leaves on the ground. They modeled and crumpled up 24 different types of leaves themselves and placed them on the ground with cinema IVD simulation tools for the grass and flower blocks. Grass and flower rocks created a deformed mesh and the rest was done with Forester and Multiflora. They used Multicloner to spread the grass on the ground. The filtering Bivertex map option allowed them to paint directly on the surface and place the grass exactly where they wanted it to grow. They also made the rocks with Forester. The trees were made with Speed Tree. They worked for hours to make the trees look very realistic and different from each other by following photos of real trees and using the random seed option. They exported three different versions of each tree with a different number of polygons to use the correct and lightest version depending on the distance from the camera. The moods are mainly two. The first is a grey rainy day, and the other is an evening near dusk, when natural light creates a high contrast with the interior lights. The primary light sources are two HDRIs downloaded for free from neomotionshdrs.net. They use this one for the rainy environment. For sunset ambiance, most of the interior lights are area lights, with different temperatures. On the higher floors they used light materials because they only needed to see the light itself, and not an actual light hitting the surrounding surfaces. They started by texturing the larger surfaces, such as the general floor. They created three different textures from a single image, also downloaded from textures.com, and used the glow map and the normal map. For the water puddles they created a pure water material, using only reflection and refraction layers, and placed inside the opacity layer a Lucas Cinema noise, with a large global scale. The texture of the overhanging floors is made of a single marble texture, and a lot of Photoshop for the leaks and dirt overlaying it. Finally, they created a bump texture, adding some black and white gradients on each slab, so they don't look perfectly aligned in their assembly. The glass is a simple glass material with a large-scale noise in the boom layer. The glass creates slightly curved reflections. As for the rendering, they used Corona's default settings. Those are the raw renders as they came out of the Corona render ready for post-production. They always try to get the best result directly from the render output, but sometimes it's complicated for some reasons. So they work until the result is good enough to allow them to achieve the realistic look in post. They don't use Photoshop just for contrast and color enhancement. Most of the time they use it to get as close as possible to the real photos, which is only possible with the right amount of alpha channels. They always use multiple passes to make an alpha channel of every material and object in the scene. They use Photoshop adjustment layers to adjust brightness, contrast and colors to get as close as possible to the real photo. One of the many features of Corona's ray frame buffer is that it is useful for managing the post-production process, as it can save two or more images with different exposures in seconds.
Then, they blended the multiple exposures in Photoshop to get the best of each light and shadow. We leave you with the final images. But first, if you found the video interesting, please like and subscribe to analyze more projects.